How's it going guys? Today we're working on a 2001 Mazda Miata MX-5. Uh, it's a six-speed manual. The customer sent it in. They are replacing the ACM and they're having problems with the IMMO, the security in other words. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to clone the EEPROM chip from the old one to the new one. The chip is a 93LC56. It's made by microchips. It's a 16-bit. Uh, the ECM itself is a Denso 279721-1201. This is our old one. Uh, as you can see, here's the part number. We have this, uh, this tag on the old one. It doesn't really uh, tell much. I'm sure you could somehow look this number up here but uh it doesn't say that it's a denso or anything this one we got a little more information there right here is our our eprom chip um i tried to do this on the board with our our little clip here but i could not get a good connection so I am going to have to remove this from the board with hot air. When we go to remove it, we're going to look at this little dot right here. We're gonna make a, a mark on the board so we know that that uh, is pin one right there. That way we have the orientation when we go to put it back on. We're gonna be using the Easy P 2023 Plus. This is the software for it that we're going to be using. So we're going to use hot air to remove this EEPROM chip. We're just going to lightly clamp on the chip. Put some hot air to it. Just like that. Comes right off. So next we're gonna clamp our little EEPROM chip into our clamp here, red wire, pin one. If you look at this EEPROM chip, see if I can get it to focus here. If you look at the chip, you can see that that little dot right there, that is pin one. And a lot of times if it doesn't have a dot, this edge over here, will be sloped whereas the other edge is, is completely flat so you always know where pin one is next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our little clamp this is pin one so it's going to go on like like this just like that Now that we got that firmly clamped in there, oh, see that? Oh, it's a little bit off. I'll have to fix that. Okay, now we can see that things in there fairly straight. I've ground down my clamp a little bit to get in on them uh, on a board that uh, I couldn't really get in there without it uh, tapered down, so. Gonna go over here. We're gonna go to 93 from. We're gonna go to microchips, and we're going to actually we'll just hit fine. 93 LC. 56 and the 16 bit one right there select now we're gonna go to read we're gonna read it a, a couple times just to make sure that the this over here isn't changing we're gonna save that 
save. I've already saved it once. We're going to save it again just uh, so you guys can see the whole process. So once we've done that, we're going to remove the other chip off the other board. And we're going to write this to that. Okay, I've replaced the EEPROM chip with our clone board's EEPROM. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read it. We'll see the chip is blank. We're going to erase it. And we're going to go file open. Open up our original board's EEPROM read that we saved. Right there it is. And we're going to go to auto down here. Make sure you clicked verify. What that does is when you write it, it re-verifies that everything was written correctly and matches. So that, uh, say you go up here and you hit right there, it will, I'll do it for you. See how it says write complete? Even if it writes it and something changes here, which I doubt it did, we can rewrite it and see. Or reread it and see. And it didn't change, so you can double check it that way or you can just be safe and hit auto, especially if you have a bigger file where you can't see everything, you don't know if anything's changing. Um, it's always a good idea to use the auto write. And when you do that, it writes it, then it reads it and compares it all to what it's supposed to be writing, make sure it's all matches 100%, uh, and then gives you a complete. And if it doesn't match 100%, it'll give you an error that says it doesn't match. So now that we're done with that, we are going to solder this back onto the board. Making sure that this is lined up perfectly and that it's in the correct orientation. Sometimes if you don't clean up these little tabs, it's hard to get them to set perfectly. And we're gonna take our hot air. I'm gonna come right in from the very top. I don't know if you guys will be able to see the solder heat up and melt and the chip settle on the phone or not. I don't want that side. I don't want that side. So once you're done with that, then you can take a, a microscope or a magnifying glass and you can come in here and you can give a little push on each one of these legs just to make sure that it's that it's nice and tight down on there you don't want one to be loose and not not down because then you won't get a good connection and we are done we just put the cover on the board and we're good to go there is a another way to do this if you're not uh if you have a problem with your IMMO on your board, what you do is you do a read just like that. And what you'll do is you'll go in here and you'll go erase. Oh, it's not detected. So if we do erase, it will turn this into all Y's just like it was before we did the, the read and you'll put it back in the car turn the key on and then turn it off and remove the ECM and what will happen I'll show you here it's going to come up and it's going to look like this right here and what we're going to do is we're going to take this 
section right here and we're going to copy that we're gonna open our original file which is this right here with this uh, 005A, 005A and we're going to paste that in on this line here. So right here, we're gonna paste that in right there, whatever it brings up. Uh, each computer is gonna be different and what that does is it allows the IMMO to not look for the IMMO box, supposedly. I'm not 100% sure exactly if that's that's how it functions, but that's what uh, this says anyway. So if you just have your ECM, your one ECM and you're having problems with the IMMO, you don't have one to clone over. Uh, say you got the vehicle without a, a ECM and you just, uh, you put a used one in and you don't have anything to clone it onto it for it to, uh, to run. This is how you get rid of that issue. And I'm also going to share this, uh, this website here so that you can go read this for yourself. So if anyone wants to, to type that in and go read this tutorial on your own, you can. It might walk you through a better, a little bit better than I have. Um, but if you've done any EEPROM work, you'll definitely get the, the gist of it.